All right, um, what we're going to do now is we're going to check some understanding of how we can find our sample size, okay? So how to find, how to find sample size, okay? Um, we're going to give it a problem here. And what we have, a company has received complaints about its customer service. Oh, no. The manager intended to hire a consultant to carry out a survey of customers. Before contacting the consultant, the company president wants to, some idea of the sample size that she will um, require to uh, pay for. One value of interest is the proportion P of customers who are satisfied with the company's service. Okay, so proportion, all right, satisfied with the company's service. Okay. She decides that she wants to estimate to be with estimate to be within three percentage points. Okay, or that right there. Okay, at a ninety-five percent confidence well level. So, what is this three percentage points going to be? Well, that three percentage points. What we should know um, is that it's going to be our margin of error. All right, that's our margin of error. And since we're talking about proportions, proportion and she wants to estimate between weights in three, we're talking about a confidence interval. All right, a confidence interval. And so knowing how to construct a confidence interval, we say whatever our P value, whatever our P hat is from our sample, plus or minus our margin of error, okay, and that will give us our value. So we also have a confidence level of 95%. Okay, so using a conservative estimate for P hat, how large of a sample is needed? Well. N, when we figure this out, is this is going to be, since we have this, this is going to be AZ, all right, our critical value times the square root of P hat times 1 minus P hat over N, all right, that's our margin of error, and that is going to be plus or minus whatever our P hat is going to be, so really, in order to figure out our N, the only values in here that will have N is the margin of error, and actually the standard deviation right here. And since we want our margin of error to be three percentage points, what we can do is just do a little algebra, algebra, and we're going to go 0 0.03. All right, is going to equal z since we know our z value, our critical value at a 95% confidence level is going to equal 1.96. 1.96. That's on charts, and else you can use inverse norm to figure that out. Um, we can go 1.96 times the square root of p. Now, when it says conservative estimate. We're, since we don't know what our p-value is, we're going to say that's going to be 0.5, because that's our conservative estimate, and 1 minus 0.5 is 0.5, and we're going to divide that by n. So we're going to figure out what does this n value equal. So we're going to solve for n, okay, solve for n. So in doing so, um, we have 0 0.03, do a little algebra, divided by 1.93, all right, we can take that and square it. Oops, what am I doing? <laughs> the square doesn't go there. All right, the square goes right here. I apologize. And that equals um, 0 0.5 point times 0 0.5 divided by n. Okay. When we get this value, let's put this in our calculator just to figure this out. All right, 0 0.03 divided by 1.96. All right, it should be a 6 right there. Um, 1.96. Um, and then we're going to take that and square it. All right, and then what we have for that value is we can take the reciprocal of that, okay, and take that value, and actually n is going to equal that value, all right, and divide that value by 0 0.5 and 0 0.5, all right, so that's going to be um, 0 0.03 divided by 1.96, and that quantity squared, okay, so we're going to take uh, 0.5 squared. All right, divided by that value right there. And we want a sample size, and we're going to round to the, all right, um, largest value. So we actually get a value approximately of 1067.11. And we're going to always round up because we can't have half a person. So I'm going to say we want to approximately have 160. Our end value is going to be 168. Okay, so we want an end value of 168. All right, individuals. Okay, 168 individuals. All right, better safe than sorry. Okay, and that's what we have there. All right, cool. So our end value is about 168 um, customers. Okay, that's what we're talking about here. Well, let's try this again. We have a couple more examples. 
So in a customer company's prior year survey, 80% of the customers surveyed said they were satisfied with using this um, value as a guess. Okay, using using this as a guess for P, find the sample size needed for a margin of error of three percentage points with a confidence interval of, all right, 0.95. All right, so we have a P hat value of 0.8. And so now we're going to do the same thing. So what would that change? Well, obviously we don't have um, this right here is no longer 0.5. So what is our end value going to be? Well, it's going to be 0.8 times, all right, 0.2 divided by, well, everything else is staying the same. And so we have 0. all right, 0, 0.03 over 1.96. That quantity is going to be squared. We can put that into our calculator. All right, and we get point, all right, 0.8 times 0.2, all right, and then divide that by, all right, 0 0.03, divide by 0.196, and then squared, all right, and we have an answer of, well, in this case, knowing this, we have a approximate value of um, 682.95, but we're going to round this up to a value of, all right, 683 customers in this case. All right. All right. So knowing this value right here, using a conservative value, we needed a sample size of 1,068. And with the um, P value or approximated point estimate of uh, 0.8, um, we have a now a N value of 683. Now, if the cu cu company president demands a 99% confidence interval instead of a 95% confidence interval, would this require a smaller or larger, sa larger sample size, assuming that everything else remains the same? Well, in order to <clears throat> get a, um, in order to keep the sample size the way it is, all right, um, where it's going to be 0 0.03, okay. Uh, we are going to probably need to do what with that? Well, in order to have to keep this at 0 0.03, um, we're going to have a 0.95 and then square it. And if everything else stayed the same, well, what would this be? Would this require a smaller or larger sample size? Well, um, in order to get to this, we know that if we increase this, it's going to increase the margin of error. And so what we would need to do is that this actually would require a larger sample size, okay? A larger sample size. All right. Sample size. Um, because. Because when you increase. Um, the confidence level. Level. It increases. Um, the margin of error, but we want to keep the margin of error small, and so therefore um, we need to increase our sample size in order to make do for that margin of error. So um, we'll increase the margin of error, but we want oops, want <laughs> the margin of error of error to remain at. 3%, so we need to increase the sample size to accomplish that. All right. All right. So, and you can check that out just to verify if you want to do so. All right. Um, and going that, but we have to increase our sample size to accomplish that fact. All right. Well, there we go. How do you find sample size given three different um, types of problems? Um, very, very interesting, very easy to do. Using our margin of error, that is the key thing, and also our critical value, um, setting up an equation, and then using that to approximate what the value is. Always round up when you're doing those, when you're finding those different sample sizes. All right, well, hope this helps you out. Good luck and God bless in the rest of the problems.